Excuse me. Yeah. I'm a the, millennial. <laughs> what the fuck is a library? Right, so you don't read for, books anymore. For those of you is... who don't know, a library is a place where people used to go to check out free books. What? Um, I'll, get, I'll get more into what a book is a little bit later. You could do that? Yeah. <laughs> apparently you can do that. You don't have to purchase things or download them either. You mm-hmm. can leave your home. All right, okay. Follow me, though. Follow me, though. Leave your home. I'm already checking out. (laughs) Oh, like, first you stop me at book. Get get in your car. (laughs) Turn on your car. Drive down the street or wherever you live to the the closest local library. And I'm not sure there's a whole lot of them around anymore. So you might have to travel quite some ways. It's a rarity. Yeah, you'll have to travel quite some ways to get to this library and find books that you find interesting and then read them. But hang on, you think that's the end of the process, right? I, but there's I actu- hope it is. There's actually more, because when you're done, you have to go back to that same library. It's not like Redbox. You can't just go to any old library, <laughs> all right? You've got to go to that same library and then give them that book back. Oh, uh, so more trouble. And I thank you all for coming with me to this library. I drag you all out I here. I wish I did. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, oh, so boy. here we are in the library. And then, wouldn't you know, government officials break down the doors, then reseal up the doors, because we are now quarantined in this library from the 2K16 virus. You're joking, right? No, uh, I'm not. Uh, You've heard about the 2K16 virus, right? I wish I had them. Okay, yeah. yeah. 2K16 virus is a virus that was concocted by the government, I think, in my opinion. That's what they you want. want <laughs> you to take That's what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. With the government. Basically, t- t- 2016 was su- just such a terrible year that they, they locked us all wherever we were at that moment. Mm. And this is January 1st when we're recording this. Yep. Yeah. yeah. January yep. 1st. It took yep. a while to get it out there, but it's January 1st. <laughs> we are limited Wi-Fi technology. signal isn't so good. Yeah, library is terrible in Wi-Fi. this old library? Yeah. yeah. I better expect it. Well... I don't want to get too much into it, yeah. but we're stuck in this library with not a whole lot to read, and we don't like to read. It's kind of awful. All we do yeah. is watch movies and play video games, Yay. for the most part. So we found a bunch of books that are based on video games and movies. All that we know. So this may seem strange, but I had never heard of books until really? recently really? Yeah, yeah until yeah. until very recently yeah, i think yeah. i saw a book on the internet one time but i didn't uh, yeah. yeah weird and uh yeah. this project that i proposed has been particularly difficult due to the fact that i also don't know how to read that is conducive yeah, to so reading i studied up mm-hmm. and i i mustered some words i figured out how to yeah. literate is that a word I think it might be. <laughs> if you were literate, <laughs> it would be. Well, interesting. Um, so, yeah. well, let's just... so first you can't read, and now you can't fucking speak. <laughs> this podcast is going to be great. Christ almighty. It's okay. Just, this is just perfect. Well, let me, let's just dive right in, folks, all right? Hello, and thank you for joining us on A Novel Idea. Hey. Yeah. Hey. yeah. yeah. Let's go. Let's... Yeah, let's just go around and uh, introduce ourselves. Let's start with you to our left. I'm Nico. What's up? <laughs> hey, I am Josh. And I am also Josh. And a thing that <laughs> surely won't be confusing. That, yeah, this is going to be hard. So I'm just going to call you also Josh. and then. But aren't you going to call me also? Yeah, Josh, yeah, Josh 1 and well, Josh 2. Hopefully our voices aren't similar. No, not at all. <laughs> Josh 1 and Josh 2. Okay, I call Josh 1. <laughs> Josh A? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I knew you say that. Nice. Hey. Okay, so this is a novel idea, which is a podcast where me and my friends explore the lost art of reading in the best possible fashion, novelizations. 
And for those of you who don't know, a novelization is a derivative a novel that adapts the story of a work created for another medium, such oh, as a film, TV show, or video game. They made books off those? What? And for those of you who don't know, a book is written or printed work consisting of pages glued or sewn together along one side and bound in covers. Oh, man. We're oh. getting in there. <laughs> yeah. But we don't like books necessarily so do, we don't want to just only talk about books mm. so the first half of our show will be dedicated to just you know what's going on in general going in on. the news or what we've been up to because we're really important impressive people mm. that have a lot to say mm. Yeah. Mm. so i want to everyone i want to start with you josh a what <laughs> have you been getting into oh here we go um it's been a pretty slow week but um I Has did it? get back into Binding of Isaac oh, with okay. the new expansion that just came out after Birth Plus. Now that's that creepy game with the um, and little full of shit, shit and crying <laughs> and crying and weird shit monsters. And the baby and the umbilical cord. Yeah. Exactly. And the yeah. mom tries to kill her baby because God told her to. Yeah, Whoa. it's very edgy. Oh man, and, I like. Been... Kids it comes it. from the same person that made Super Meat Boy, if you can imagine the oh, aesthetic. Are there lots of grinders in this game? Um, there's spikes. Oh, there's spikes. Yeah. <laughs> they instantly kill you. But, uh, it? latest expansion added mod support, and... Oh, um, shit. <laughs> so... Are there any weird ass mods? Like, are we talking um, like Thomas the Tank level of mods? No, <laughs> none that I've seen yet. But oh, um, those are good. And also made the game a whole lot harder, which makes it a very weird jumping in point. Huh? Like every expansion to that game has assumed that you've mastered the previous base. Oh, okay. So you've got Rebirth, which is the easiest. Afterbirth, Plane, <laughs> oh, okay. which is like. Harder than that, and then Afterbirth Plus is even harder than both of those. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh. So are they just going to keep making the game harder and harder until it becomes unplayable? I think <laughs> this is the last one that they planned. Um, yeah, and play. just handing it off to the community with mods and all that. Oh. Huh. But, um, Which one are you on? I'm on Afterbirth Plus. Oh. So the latest one. The yeah. hardest one. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned Even that. though I'm awful at the game. <laughs> no. But hey. That's that's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also took some time with uh, Valhalla, Valhalla, or VA11, oh, all okay. dash A, which calls itself Cyberpunk Bartender Action. What? And that's a that's a Steam game, correct? <laughs> that's on Steam, and it's also coming to Vita and I think PS4 later this year as well. What's a Vita? Uh, <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, well, that's a good question. What? We have a lot of things that we that the public doesn't know about on here. Vitas, books. Um, <laughs> yeah, I haven't um, heard about this it. This is going to be a niche show, right? fellas. Jesus. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, it's right. a really comfy, just visual novel. Um, oh, okay. You alternate between surfing at the internet at home with your cat. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it okay. hits home for some of us. <laughs> oh boy! Um, <laughs> oh yeah, for you all, you obviously don't know, but our fourth member is our cat named Pooh Bear. But he also doesn't read because he's a normal fucking person, and he can't write. He can't. Yeah, I mean, cat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 you no, no, right about Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's weird what, how you got it on the first shot like that. That's what the disease like did to him. It made him a cat. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's two. That's the 2K16 virus. It turned him into a cat, but he's still the same. Christ <laughs> almighty. So when... <laughs> he's also at the library. Mm. Um, but <laughs> why we took him, I don't know. But <laughs> But yeah, in between that, you're working at your job. You have regulars that come in just day to day. You learn what drinks they like. You make their drinks for them. <laughs> and you just hear about their lives and what's going on. And it's nice. in this weird futuristic city with um, mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff going on. And um, yeah, it's just huh. comfy. Like, So it's just basically like second life if you only got one choice of a job mm -hmm. and that's bartending. 
Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, but boy. also you can't move. Oh, and you can't move. Yeah. <laughs> so like a real job. Yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> like a real job. You're just stuck behind the counter listening to people bitch about their job. <laughs> this game sounds like work. But you don't oh, get paid, great. though, do you? Oh, you do get paid. And Ooh. you can buy little stuff for your apartment, oh. actually. And you can buy, like, oh. video games for your apartment. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's just real life. Yeah. In oh, video yeah. game form. Oh, no. You know, the real reason we all play video games is to experience real life. Of course. Of course. Else? Of well, yeah. course. Yeah. And um, that's about it for me personally. Uh, Nico, what were you up to? Oh, let's see. Well, an unpopular opinion, but I was playing Final World of Final Fantasy. Uh, yeah, uh, I expected that, you know. Uh, I mean, well, you've got the majority on your side because... Uh, two people like it. They, they Who do. doesn't like it? Does he, he can speak for himself, sort of. <laughs> let him speak for himself. <laughs> Please let him speak. I speak for the cats. No, you do not. <laughs> Thank you, Lorax. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I speak for all. Jesus. But no, it's um it's visually beautiful, seriously. Mm-hmm. Like it's okay. even playing on the Vita yes. it was striking. I will give you that. And that's the reason I bought it, is I looked at it, well, not to mention, I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan, Look, let's get that established right now, and I'm the one that don't doesn't like this game. I'm the biggest critic of them all. Yes, <laughs> but it is a gorgeous game. It is very pretty. But, the story is garbage! It's just, oh, yes. I am groaning throughout the whole it, game! The story is and a little Kingdom weird, Hearts is fine. <laughs> and yet Kingdom Hearts Uh-oh. is fine? Oh, what? We got him. What fucking Uh-oh. ground do you have to stand on? <laughs> uh oh, we got him. Alright, hey, listen. Mm-hmm. Kingdom Hearts no, no, is I'm on the edge of my using, seat. and it makes you oh. think it's complicated, and that's all that matters. It makes you think it's complicated. <laughs> Kingdom hey. Hearts. Alright, back to World of Final Fantasy. Uh, Nico, take oh, it away. Okay. Why do you okay. like this mm. shit game? Mm. We'll have this discussion later. The gameplay is pretty good, you know, reminiscing of Pokemon, but mm. not exactly Pokemon. I like the stacking mechanic it has to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. you can combine your <laughs> monsters up to so have one whole giant powerhouse. Mm-hmm. It looks dumb as shit. Go on. So critical. Oh, so cool. Dang. You don't want a fucking Moogle on your head? No. Why I don't know where that fucking Moogle's been. <laughs> this dirty ass sitting on my head. It, Nobody it in Final life, Fantasy. Okay? Nobody in Final Fantasy has a goddamn hat. He, so fucking sitting in your plain ass hair. Is, ugh, that's gross. You'd rather have a chocobo wait. on your hair, wouldn't you? I would, no, I would rather sit on the wait, chocobo. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> no one in Final Fantasy has a hat? Well, no one important. Vivi? Does Cloud have a hat? Vivi? Does Cloud have a hat? <laughs> okay. <laughs> they, that's one of the main points of this game. They brought in a lot of old characters from all the other yeah. games. Yeah, they did. As characters you could play with. I Yeah, I liked the cameos. I was super surprised to see... Um, God, I can't remember her name. It's not Sarah. Lightning? From uh, Final Fantasy III. Oh. But the... Rydia. No. Maybe? The red-headed chick. That pops oh, up. okay. Yes. Yeah. I don't know her Rekia. name. Yeah, there we go. But, oh, um, yes. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. And I, it was great to see Lightning return back in her greatest role yet. Again, World Lightning of Final returns. Fantasy. Wait, you mean a Louis Vuitton model? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Better than the game. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so, um, yeah. How far are you in the game? Uh, you... Just what? Chapter 5 or 6? I mm. just revived the Warrior of Light. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, Mr. No Name from the first game. <laughs> oh, mm, okay. They gave him good characterization with the uh, Dissidia games, though. You want to know how far I got in the game? How far? You know at the very beginning of the game when you go to the castle and yeah. you meet the, the main chick of the princess? The princess, yeah. 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 No, okay. that, that's it. That's what okay. I got. I got to the save point outside that castle. And you never picked it up since? No. I like the um, go back into the past and play as the um, actual heroes thing. Oh, I haven't done that yet. Oh, gotcha. well, I think I see the quest for it, so mm. oh. that does look pretty cool to play. Yeah. It's really nifty. Mm-hmm. Did you play anything else? Uh, I've been playing Yu Gi Oh! Duelist of Legacy or Legacy yeah, of the Duelist. Yeah. Okay, it's an older yeah. game. I'm a big Yu Gi Oh fan. Yeah, so. me too. So I'm on board with this yeah, one. Go. Sure. So basically, you play his most of the historical duels from like the first four yeah. series Yu Gi Oh, GX, 5Ds, and Zexel, and a little bit of 
Arc V, but not too much. Now, when you say historical, do you mean ancient European wars? <laughs> if they were fought with trading cards, yes. So, well, like, as duelist the duelist of the Thomas. roses? Oh, my God. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fuck off, actually. Oh, God. No. no, no. You mean the series. Yeah, I know. It's a great game. I play it, too. I haven't been playing it recently. But, um, yeah, that's, a, that's probably one of the better Yu-Gi-Oh games to have ever been released yeah. honestly because well, each time they just keep adding to it and like yeah, and adding more down. decks and yeah, cards more characters and, and, and they're still doing too they have dlc still for yeah they're still making uh, story packs too yeah. like a, a couple gx oh really a couple oh, gx yeah, story those were coming packs. Out yeah they were the least... beginning i didn't realize those were still like I, yeah. going out yeah, yeah exactly. they just released that you know unreleased season four of gx with night shrouds oh yeah the Wait. one that never got the dub yeah yeah oh okay I watched it without the dub, so. Oh yeah, I had to because oh, it's the only right. sub. But I, oh. I was, I just Mr. Abs- Elitist. Okay, well, no, you had I, to. Yu-Gi-Oh, though. too good for <laughs> you. you. Listen, <laughs> no, my intentions. I got really excited. It, I mean, I know you can't see my face, guys, but I got really excited there for a second just because I thought there was new GX material, and I was like, oh wait, no, this is what I've already seen. All right, it just right. has a dub now. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and it has a. <laughs> Update a list of cards, but it's pretty good. It's pretty mm-hmm. nice. You mm-hmm. run any anything special, or just kind of run in the mill deck? Like, uh, yeah, you got, you got a theme. <laughs> XZs, really? Uh, XZs. Yeah, I want to do more pendulums, but I gotta pay actual money to, to get them now. Ooh, fun stuff. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No. no. Thanks, Konami. Oh, mm, Konami. Mm. Oh man, I didn't think you would get a chance to say fuck Konami on this podcast. <laughs> no, Thanks for I... color me surprised. Yeah. Fuck Konami. <laughs> Jesus, I don't want to get into Konami. I'm just going to get into my week now, okay? Yeah, what's your um, week? What was your week? <laughs> let's see. I have been playing lots of games, but I only want to talk about a few. Okay. Uh, Final Fantasy XV, first of all, because uh, I I started off really strong, but then I got Overwatch. <laughs> just, I got Overwatched, and I've been playing Overwatch for months straight, so I, I set uh, Final Fantasy XV and a bunch of other games aside, like uh, The Last Guardian as well, which came out just mm. after um but i got i picked final fantasy 15 back up and i'm really pushing through it and it's it's mm. good it's not phenomenal it won't be game of the year obviously i think ign or not ign a uh, game informer just mm. named overwatch game of the year yeah. if that means that did it also win pc game of the year too no it didn't win pc game of the year um, I don't remember what PC game of the year was because I don't play a PC nor do I care about any other news. I'm sorry, this is gonna offend a lot of people. <laughs> oh, a lot of people just got yes, really angry. And saw the hand <laughs> <of> gaming <laughs> uh, No, I mean no. And PC players chill. We have a PC player on our couch, so I'm not that person. That's oh, Josh A. So I don't. Uh, I don't yeah. have to be that person. I'm PlayStation. Um, but. Final Fantasy XV, back on subject. It's it's really good. I like the beginning of the game a lot, where yeah. you're just on it. You're just four four boys, four, <laughs> four young young strapping males, strapping, strapping boys, attractive young men. attractive boys <laughs> on good. a road trip, mm. with, and their car breaks down. And they have to hunt monsters for money to buy parts for their car. <laughs> and they're camping, and they're taking photos. And, and bonding. And bonding. I, I do wish it had a like a veritable prologue, though. Yeah. Like, especially seeing stuff I'm... from Versus 13 yeah. with the actual city of ins- insomnia. Like, I wish we could have So, let, yeah, and that's where I was going with this. Is This is a great boys bonding road trip game. And it could have been called Rogue One of Final Fantasy Story, <laughs> but Fantasy. not... To be fair, that's like all of them. But it, it's not a good numbered Final Fantasy game. But also, neither was well, 13. And uh, I, mm, so I'd argue that it's a good Final Fantasy game. I guess. I just... Just on it being the merit of it being a good game and that the character interactions are what save it, not necessarily the plot. Yeah, the character interactions are very good. But the plot is strained and confusing and you had to have seen the anime and the movie that released to get a lot of what's happening. Wait, so I gotta watch an anime and movie of a game that just came out to understand it. Yes. King's Glaive and Brotherhood. Yes. You have to watch both Well, to really get a full grasp I haven't seen either. 
But and it will probably open up a lot of shit for you though if you uh, do watch it. I'm, I'm not even kidding. Like I'm not trying to promote their shit, but for <laughs> real though, watch the movie, watch the anime. It's gonna make a lot of the character interactions make sense. A lot now, of is the movie as necessary as the anime though? Because the I feel... anime is necessary for the gameplay as far as your um, your four bros right, right, and right. their interactions, and it really establishes why they're even bros or why you should even care about their relationships at all. Because um, yeah, outside of Kingsglaive having villain dude being villainous, Kings, Kingsglaive explains a lot of the king's motivations as to why he didn't take any preemptive steps why he welcomed the empire into his home <laughs> why the bros are on the road to begin with why they didn't just aren't already married or having it in the city oh, right, and right. why luna is not there as well mm. um it explains how she escaped which is actually a really good story and it has a really great main character who is not featured in the game Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't know his name because Final oh. Fantasy they have all our weird names. <laughs> we have characters. It's a cool that they have you. You know the four bros and everything. But mm-hmm. uh, are there any main female characters that you have to play as or play um, with? With the or is it total no. fest? With the expansion stuff, we might be getting it. We okay, might see but more of the to selfie you, chick. Yeah, but to answer your question accurately. As far as right now, if you went to the store oh, to yeah, buy yeah. the game, no, you Seriously? do not get to play as anyone else but Noctis. Well, yeah, uh, you wow. can't even switch between the bros, which is a complaint, a complaint of mine. You should in battle anyway. You should be able to switch yeah. over. But there are a whole bunch of Final Fantasies that just have static party. No, I know, but also there aren't a whole lot of Final Fantasies with this many interesting characters. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and it, I. I guess it's a compliment and a complaint that I want to play as their other characters so badly. Just for the different playstyle, or...? Well, and they're all very fleshed out. They're all interesting characters, and I would love to be in their shoes instead of just whiny-ass Noctis all the time. <laughs> Why? Eh, but, yeah. So, I mean, it's I can fine. see though. that. But overall, I it, the game is good. It is a good game. Yeah. No, and I'm yeah. having fun, and I'm still playing it, so that's a plus, because I have a very, very high ADT level, <laughs> ADHD level. So high will, ADD, high, low attention span. Yeah, low attention span. So I will drop a game instantaneously if I'm not gripped by it. Mm-hmm. So Final Fantasy XV is keeping me going, and I'm still on, I'm still on the hype train for it. That's I, pretty I, I hope with the story DLC and all that they're doing that we can kind of see more, because like, mm-hmm. with the game at right now you can definitely see the holes yeah it, and at, I, I think we talked about this um before but it is um it really is reminiscent of the phantom pain uh metal gear solid 5 it's like this game needs to ship we can't it's better than metal gear solid 5 don't get me wrong but <laughs> wait 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 <laughs> wait <laughs> story wise which is worse oh, God, oh, no, okay. no come on story wise oh. which is worse <laughs> No, but that's hard. Exactly. That's a hard... That's a hard question. Hang on. Well, Metal Gear Solid 5... Because 5, I did love the character inter... Like... I like... That's part of why I really enjoyed 5, was the gameplay and the character and Yeah, and you gotta... And it was cool to see the main villain of... Is it... Is it the first game? Metal Gear? Of Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2. Metal Gear 2. Venom Snake. Uh, be the oh, hero. Sorry, yeah, just Metal Gear One. Spoiler alert. Metal Gear One. Yeah, yeah. It's a spoiler. Any, <laughs> so, NES. It's an NES game. Well, he is just called Big Boss. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, Good job. Well, whatever. Spoiler. You did it. <laughs> spoiler. If you haven't played Metal Gear Solid Five by now, you're not gonna play it, are you? So <laughs> Jesus. Oh. It's, it's like seriously. Well, anyways, <laughs> Metal Gear Solid just Five. Just the main one. character is not the real Big Boss. Mm. The game makes you believe it. Right, yeah. In the beginning, anyway. It sells you with the it hospital. Sells you, and the, yeah, it sells yeah. you that you have woken up from a coma, nine-year coma, yeah. and that a long time. <laughs> you, your character that you are playing is Big Boss. However, it is revealed at the end that you are just one of the um, people who are also injured in whatever accident right. uh, Big Boss was in, but you got plastic surgery to make yourself look like Big Boss to, to so, throw off zero. To yeah. throw off zero. And that character ends up fully embracing the fact that he is Big Boss and mm. goes off the rails, and that leads into the first Metal Gear game. 
Oh, I say go off the rails, nah, but but that he's just following Big Boss's instructions. Yeah, he is, but Big Boss needs to take him out or something like. No. Why? Why does he get killed in Metal Gear? Because then? Solid Snake <laughs> kills him. Oh shit! I don't know shit about because of the whole <laughs> Sands of Our Land <laughs> dispute thing. I don't remember the NES game it's, too well. Don't really, <laughs> idiot. It but, was a long time ago. But, yeah. A long time ago. <laughs> I do have it though. I should replay it. Um. But yeah, so he is the one who dies in Metal Gear Solid. Or, or Metal, Metal Gear, Gear 1. Metal yeah. Gear 1. Um, and that explains why in Metal Gear 2 he's suddenly back from the dead. Oh, so yeah. And while we're on the giving me shit about Kingdom Hearts story, let's talk about Metal Gear. But like Metal you. Gear was never sold as a game for babies. <laughs> Oh, 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 wow. Wow, that's a hard... Just because it has Disney characters doesn't mean no, it's for babies. Yeah, it like, was a market in America Kingdom Hearts kids. and World of Final Fantasy both have that More. Babby's first RPG feel to them. Wait, really? World of really? Final Fantasy. Kingdom Hearts is more complicated than World of Final Fantasy. You... Now, for World of Final Fantasy... The... But just Not from, from, like, a selling standpoint... Yeah, I, I mean, I guess it's cartoony because it involves Disney characters. Well, that was the yeah. whole pitch for World of Final Fantasy. They said it was for first-time players. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm, let's not get too much into Kingdom Hearts, all right? But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, coming, I'm coming to this fresh off of talking about Kingdom Hearts for like three hours the oh. other night. Oh, okay. Well, was, no wonder you're coming for, for me, all right? Oh, boy. But... No, it was like a good time. Just like, what, what do I need to know for three Oh, there's 12 Xenohorts running around? Yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> 2.8, coming soon. <laughs> fucking 59 99 for that, that title is, so is a fucking dumb. disgrace. I would really? pay 59 99 for Kingdom Hearts um, 1.5 plus 2.5. But they are releasing that as, what is it, 39 No, it's 50. 40, it's 50. It's 49 They're releasing that as 49 But however, I would pay 59 99 for that one. Yeah. While it's the reverse for 2.8, I don't want to pay fifty nine ninety nine for a DS game and a movie. <laughs> That's and all a you get, you get a little teaser and a little playable teaser playable, playable thing. thing. Like, I, no, oh, no, yeah. oh, That's yeah. it. Um, <laughs> full price game, my ass. The HD if for you add drop. up all the mainline games, by the way, mm -hmm. like one, one point five, two, two point five, two point eight, point two, and three, it adds up to thirteen. And oh, there's also wow. seven of those games. Mm. <laughs> and the 13 plus 7 is the 20. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Nomura planned it all from the start. Okay. Wow. The absolute madman. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> what conspiracy is this? <laughs> Back to what, what we were talking about. Uh, Metal Final Gear Fantasy. story versus Final Fantasy yeah, yeah. story. Yeah, yeah. We're talking go. about Kido Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and in, in, in all truth, though, I haven't finished Final Fantasy, mm. but yet I still think it has a better story than Metal Gear okay. Solid Five. Okay, because that one was just like you had to have played all the other games to kind to grasp everything they're doing. Oh yeah, yeah. But, but with this, the same with all. But Metal with Gear. yeah, but with Final Fantasy, you can pretty much just drop into it and play mm. it, even though. Uh, casuals will have led or are led to believe that this is the fifteenth installment in the series. Well, yeah, <laughs> not now they're all standalone games. So. No, they don't. It's, yeah. I, I just crack up every time I see those articles. Like, is Final Fantasy fifteen the fifteenth game in a series? Do I need to play the other fourteen? <laughs> well, have you seen the Final Fantasy Grand Unified Theory? <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm sure it's bad. <laughs> But yeah. let's not. I don't know. Let's not get into that. Let's get into the subject that all three of us, I'm sure, had on our list: the Nintendo Switch. Oh, oh yes. yes, the Nintendo Switch has been oh, revealed. Geez. First yeah. thoughts, Josh A. Um, I'm really excited. Fuck those peripheral prices. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that's a eighty dollars for the dock, right? Um, here I got. Pull it up. Pull it yeah, up. They were just talking about the dock's useless, basically. The dock is useless. The dock it's an is HDMI. Just if you want to plug like, into another TV and not move all your stuff over. It's essentially a giant box that you can plug your HDMI cable into, and then plug that cable into your television. Oh mm -hmm. wow! So <laughs> and it charges your uh, screen. <laughs> so basically, a waste of eight dollars, basically. But yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. It's not as strong of a launch as the Wii U. What? 
Have it you wasn't? seen the list of games that came out for the Wii U at launch? They didn't have compared that Compared to the Nintendo Switch? They what? did not oh, have that No, many. okay, what? Nintendo Switch has like eight games. Well, I understand. I understand like there's a few, but they're strong. They're Wii. strong eight games. What did Wii U have that was so strong? Except for I ARMS. I remember a lot. <laughs> Wait, ARMS oh, looks okay. good. ARMS <laughs> looks bad. <laughs> ARMS is awful. I think it could be good, you know? We all have arms. We don't need to buy the game arms. But can your arms stretch and punch someone across the... Exactly. If I wanted stretchy distance. arms, I would watch the Fantastic Four movies. I know you would say mm. that. Jesus. You and know, I don't. <laughs> you know they're going to be in Smash, so don't even... Do uh, Wii U at launch had Assassin's Creed 3, Batman Arkham City, Black Ops 2, Darksiders 2, Just Dance 4, Mass Effect 3, New Super Mario Bros. U, Ninja Gaiden 3, Nintendo Land... Rabbit's Land, Scribblenauts Unlimited, Skylanders, Sonic All Stars Racing, Tekken Tag 2, and Wipeout, Zombie U, and Warriors Orochi 3. I'm sorry, but okay. all those were subpar, basically. Now, let me get into that. I'm just all saying there's but more variety. Three, all but three of those games had been previously released on different consoles and are the superior versions on those different consoles. Hey, man. Just Dance on the Wii U? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding <laughs> <Yeah>. me? <laughs> Almost all of them sound like they were on well, other consoles. Hang on. Black people can play um, Just Dance on the Wii U, though. Oh, yeah. It oh, no longer has really? the really? You know about the Kinect? Yes, it, I heard about the Kinect. Yeah, the Kinect doesn't recognize <laughs> yeah. black So you can't play it. Oh, I'm black, by the way. But... Uh, well, yeah, it was a big reveal. Yeah, oh, <laughs> the lore. The lore. Get into the lore of the podcast, but... but so, I mean, yeah. Connect. Wow. Yeah. So, I can't play Connect. But I can play the Wii U version. You yes, yeah. you can play the Wii U version because it doesn't need a camera. It just uses the Wii Mote and nunchuck, or two Wii Motes, or I don't. What you tie two nunchucks together? I don't know. Exactly. But <laughs> just, you, just tie two. it's whatever. Why are we getting into Just Dance? The Nintendo Switch. My first thoughts. I'm just going to go right now. Is that I pre-ordered it. <laughs> That's my first thought. I got one. I grabbed one. Suckers As did I. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we no. both got one. He did not. Josh A. did not get one. Fuck you. Uh, um, but the only launch title I'll be getting, though, like, now, my excitement died after I mean, the uh-huh. announcement. I watched it live. We all did. We were all here watching it together. Um, I am only going to pre-order Zelda. Really? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. I mean, 1-2 Switch I might get later on, but is when I go to pick up the console... The only game coming back with me is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. But yeah. no Mario Odyssey? No. Mario Odyssey is that's, Holiday. That's not a oh, launch holiday? title. That's oh. Holiday 2017, bro. Oh, yeah. Too far off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So out of all the launch titles, that's the only one that I have to have mm. day one and that I will pl- be playing until it's finished, I'm sure. So, yeah, this excitement died a little bit. But the, all the games that are announced, I didn't have an issue with any of them. All of them looked yeah. exciting. Yeah. All of them looked great, except for Skyrim. Um, <laughs> and Skyrim's not even coming until fall. Fall, yeah. Fall, fall 2017. A game that's been out for <laughs> so long. For how long has it been? It's just, well, I it, mean, it's been, it'll have been almost six years by that point. Six years. Wow. Yeah. So a six-year-old game. <laughs> it's, it's not a launch title. What did I call that? Um... <laughs> but uh, obviously, Nico, oh. what are your what are your first thoughts on the Switch, Nico? I thought it was a really good review. Um, even though it was a little weird with some of the people, but oh, I yeah. did those <laughs> yeah. trend, uh, those guys were goofy. The Splatoon guy, that was a game. Oh, I love the Splatoon. No guy. more heroes guy though. Nobody was laughing, but I was laughing. <laughs> You know the reason for that, though. What is, is um, Suda went off script. Oh, he oh. did. He went totally off script. So the reason that the translator sounded so off well, was that because he was, was having terrible. to translate live. Like, instead of having a script that he would go along. Well, I don't care, because the hype for No More Heroes <clears throat> is... It, it's, it's strong. It's strong. It's very strong. I love the first two games. And I actually like them more on the Wii. Which mm-hmm. is bizarre. Like, <laughs> I know they did that redo or whatever for the PS3. Well, just for the first game. Yeah, the first game. Yeah. Um, I did oh, not yeah. like Hero, that. Heroes Paradise isn't good. Yeah, that was not a good game. 
but no more heroes uh no more heroes 2 yeah strong games probably the, some of the best games for the week and um he even had a, an interview semi recently last summer where it's like um i would like to make no more heroes 3 within the next decade <laughs> but it might be like 15 to 25 years before we see it uh, uh, but like and huh. he recognized that the fan outcry has been a huge thing for it so yeah. I'm glad to see him working on something even if it's not No More Heroes 3 that will just see Travis Touchdown or Santa Destroy yeah I, I'm excited to see these characters again I hope it's number 3 obviously because it's. I don't want it to get the Kingdom Hearts syndrome where <laughs> every they, they keep announcing, oh, new Kingdom Hearts under the way, oh. and then it's like a fucking PSP game, <laughs> and that's not a numbered title and has nothing to do with anything. Kingdom Hearts two came out when? Gives you more questions. Two thousand four, twelve years ago. Two thousand four. Oh. Twelve years. You're ago. welcome. Thank uh, you, Nico, for having that ready. Thank I you know. so much. You guys come prepared to bash me this entire <laughs> podcast. That, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Jesus. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, quick point on Skyrim. That is just base Skyrim, by the way. Oh, it's not HD? No. Um, the listing is just Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim. Oh. oh, no. So it's not Skyrim Special Edition. Do you think At least that's have... not what they're calling it. Do you think no. it, it'll have Dawn There's... Guard? Or... Um... Oh, Dawn Guard, probably. Uh, like, I, I, I would expect the, it to the have DLC. a DLC. But no mod no support. way in fucking no, hell is no, that getting that, mod support. I never even dreamed it would have mod support. That's why it will be. Not, it will not be getting my sixty dollars. I mean, I have it for PS4. <laughs> Fuck you, Nintendo. Oh wow, that, that was a bad decision. To even, I mean, it's well, all right the, that they have it, but it's bad that it's not available for launch. Yeah, it, third party there games that have weird, been out like, for a while. Bullshit that they have to do to get it running on the Switch. Yeah, who knows what they have to go through, dude. But. get any game to run on Nintendo because I heard that was the issue with Wii U was that third parties were having so many issues working well, the, with Nintendo the and the Wii U that, software the only one that was consistent was Ubi yeah really they brought yeah Assassin's Creed Assassin's, Zombie U uh, uh, Zombie Rayman. U Just Dance uh, they were the only ones who kept like, I, with Nintendo yeah. surprisingly yeah. not that we wanted them to <laughs> Ubisoft I get mean, your shit together <laughs> I mean, to be fair. Yeah, so, I don't know. But, yeah. Best developer for the Nintendo, I guess. Besides Sega. Yeah. Oh, man. Speaking of which, I'm glad we're getting... Oh, yeah, but that was already revealed. But Project Sonic. Yeah, Project oh, Sonic. Uh, uh, Switch. Yes. And we're also getting Sonic Mania as well. Yeah, Sonic Mania, which, which is great. Moved. So, will that be launching at the same time as the other versions? Yeah, it's listed as... Spring 2017, so I mean, well, that's that's good. Nice. That's good news. I'm yeah. actually very excited for Sonic Mania because, yeah. um, unlike most Sonic fans today, I think um, because I, a lot of Sonic fans like the Sonic Adventure games. Um, yeah. Uh, generations, generations, colors. Generations. colors as long as not those, boom or anything. the most popular of the recent titles. Yeah. Um, I do not. I don't like any 3D Sonic game. Not a venture two hero. Not a single one of them. Oh. I mean, they all have their charms. They have things that I like about them. No. But on a whole, I cannot give any of them a positive thumbs up. Did but, you play four, by the way? Uh, the episodic one. Yeah. No, I did not. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is that a good one? No. Oh, no. <laughs> so, no. thank like you. <laughs> well, thank uh, you for. They, they stopped after episode two. Oh yeah, they did. Oh really? They just gave up. They dude. just gave up. Okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> Well, I think that speaks volumes. Um, but I do, however, still really appreciate the original um, Sonic games. Uh, mm. Sonic and Knuckles. And, oh, yes. Yeah, one of my favorites. Sonic the Hedgehog. And that's why I'm very excited about Sonic Mania. Because mm. it's obviously just a, exactly a like letter. that. Yeah, it's, it's a, a love, love letter, letter to, to all the, the fans. OG Sonic. Mm. So, um, very much looking forward to that game. And I'm glad it'll be on the Switch. Yeah, um, yeah. It'll be in all three main consoles. It'll, so. um, cause yeah, it's not coming to Vita or. It is not. I don't. Um, let me double check. But um, I don't see why they should. If, but, <laughs> if <laughs> it's not, then Switch would be the only way to play that portable. Oh wow! I don't well, know. for two and a half to four hours. For <laughs> <laughs> sure, time yeah, it could be. Um, it's not listed as Vita, so I mean, if you want to play Sonic on the go. So yeah, which is your answer? That's your only answer. Mm. Well, I think everybody in the world who wants to know about the Switch knows everything there is to know about it by now. Mm. Um, 
So let's get into what only we can offer, and that is what do you want to see on the Switch, Nico? I want to see whatever that Shin Megami Tensei no, game is. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. Let me okay, correct to be fair, it. that was a 15 second fucking trailer, trailer. for nothing. That show just okay, for nothing. Nothing. doing Fine. just standing there. Like, Alright, so what do you want it to be then? You have to get a little creative. RPG? Um, SMT5? Sure. Do you want it to be SMT5? Yeah, do you, want, you it want it to be it to straight be, up number five? I kind of want it to be something entirely like a Devil Survivor game. Mm, yeah, another spin off okay. thing. Okay. I really would also, if possible, have um. Interest. Oh, sorry. Oh, Tokyo Mirage Session sequel. Either that or a straight up port. Like yes. Because that's a really good game. It was lived under a lot of people's radars. It was a really just good just because game. it was on the Wii U. Huh. But it was really good. Extremely. Mm-hmm. If you like Persona, you like Fire, or more Persona. Like, if you like Persona, then you would like this game. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. If you like Persona, you have all the patience in the world. The uh, figure at the end of that trailer is Odin in um, his SMT4 Apocalypse design. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. the golden figure. So you think it will just take place right after that game? No, I don't think it's another sequel, but just an interesting thing that they're using that model. I will present my theory that you all laughed in my face about when I told you guys about. Because I don't play these games. Mm. Sorry, viewers, listeners, (laughs) whatever. If you're watching a podcast. I mean, it's not that big. uh, Here, at least. Anyways, I don't play them. But when I saw that trailer, and I saw them all like moving in those poses, the first thing I thought was, oh, a fighting game. (laughs) <laughs> and then now you mention that these are versions of characters from different games. So, uh, you know, previous games. Mm. So I'm thinking, could it be? Could it be a I mean, Shin Megami Tensei fighting game? Atlas has teamed up with, um, I mean, Arxis for Persona 4. There is a Persona, yeah, oh, yeah fighting for... game. But, it's not yeah. that crazy of a theory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> could be. You never know. I think it's unlikely but hey I mean, we, not, we yeah. don't know <laughs> one game i which has been getting rumors that i hope is coming is that pokemon stars mm. pokemon Star. for the switch what yeah. is that like you know how they had the third version like diamond pearl platinum red blue yellow oh so they the third ver- the theory is the third version yeah. will be for on the switch yeah and they haven't done that in a minute they've abandoned it since Black? generation four no, they had it for, well, for five, they split it into two games, Black 2 and well, Black 3. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I don't count that because that's not the third version. Oh, yeah, it's a sequel. It's yeah, really, it's yeah. more sequel than yeah. enhanced re- remake. And they, yeah, well, and then remake, none of the, re- and none of the remakes got the third versions either. Right. Well, that makes sense. That does just, make sense. I just yeah. really want... Crystal. Crystal. But they added some of the elements uh, of the third soul game into crystal. the remakes. No, call it Crystal Clear. Crystal Clear. It's, it's, it's a game that clear, also... It's never going to exist. It's, it's a game that also helps your skin. Comes hey. proactive. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> With a free pair of contacts? Sign me. Uh, Claritin? Claritin? The latest <laughs> episode brought to you by Claritin. Crystal, Claritin Clear. Crystal Clear, clear. water. Mm. It will sponsor be sponsored by Aquafina. Mm. And Suicune. And yes. It'll have Suicune on the bottle. <laughs> and the water Christ. is blue. <laughs> Drink from the northern wind. <laughs> oh, my but um, digging in the data files for Pokemon Sun and Moon, people found walking animations. Oh yeah, for, for every single Pokemon. Yeah, and I thought for sure that that would happen when the the er- early theories about the game were coming out. Mm. That you would have your Pokemon your follower, follower like, Pokemon. Because like, why wouldn't you? Yeah, it seems completely logical. But to be fair, they are also straining. To fit those games on 3DS cartridges. That's that's oh, true, yeah. and I th- like. And that brings us to our next theory: is that the 3DS is a dead console now? Really? Mm, not now. I mean, not dead, but it will be soon. It's going to be sunsetted. Yeah, but I um, think that's what I'd say. If I completely take it over, though, I think it will. Not by affordable think it'll be soon. Side. By 2018, I don't think we're going to have that much coming out for it. Yeah. Like, um, I mean, games will continue to come out for it because the, we can't deny that the 3DS is the portable gaming. Right. That is, I mean, it is the definition of portable gaming. So you're I mean, still going to get those cooking games. Outside and of um, <laughs> Dragon Quest Eleven, I don't, like, what else don't see is there upcoming? Out, yeah. Like, in, outside of the next couple of months, like... I don't think even much... Nintendo has anything. No, they had that... that their big new RPG IP they had, that Ever Oasis. 
Oh yeah, Everwood. That's what they're oh, hyping it up for. Yeah. That's what they're hyping it up for. And then that Yoshi game is it already out? Uh, uh, next Pucci. month. Yeah, next Pucci month. Okay, so that one's upcoming. So basically, we're just lying. <laughs> and they <laughs> we're just lying. The Dragon Quest eight. Hits, I said outside Fort. the next couple months. Yeah. Okay, that's true. Um, Dragon Quest eight. Yeah, that week. is coming. Sure. Yeah, I will not be buying. But no, they've been hyping <laughs> up that Ever Oasis RPG. I, so. Yeah, I completely forgot that that existed. Yes. <laughs> um, oh, man. So what are you looking for in the Switch as far as a game that is not announced that you just really want on the Switch? Josh, Sorry, if I can wrap back around oh, really quick. Speaking okay. of RPGs, uh, that Octopath Traveler. The Square Enix RPG oh, yeah. looks really oh, good. Yeah. It does not look Final good. Fantasy. Mm-hmm. Not, but it looks so stylish. Yeah, like and it's not use. Final Fantasy. Oh my god. Is it <laughs> going to stab Is it going to be a Final Fantasy? No, no it's no. not Final Fantasy. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Anyways, Dream Games. Let's see. Dream Game. The Switch. Josh A. Can I say Virtual Console? Because if they get GameCube yeah, Virtual go Console ahead. and they get... That's the theory. Like, the uh, reports from Eurogamer. But I don't want... Mario, you don't want Mario I, Sunshine. I do, but like you I don't know. want Super Smash Bros. Melee. <laughs> Luigi's I don't Mansion. want them to do the thing that they've been doing with Virtual Console, and they just give us the same five games that have. Oh that yeah, so you want those played. weirdo games? Yeah, give me fucking Tales of Symphonia. Give me but Skies of Arcadia. The problem with that is they have to get those other developers and third parties that to yeah. agree to it. And yeah. that's a whole legal thing, while Nintendo can just be like, we can skip all of that and give them the games it. that they still love mm. and not have to do anything for it. Give me, um, I don't know if it's connected to this, but Eternal Darkness's IP was recently renewed by Nintendo. Oh, okay. So I don't know if that means re-release. Well, I don't know if yeah. that means sequel. I don't know if that just means they're holding on to their copyrights or whatever. Yeah, who knows? But yeah. but N- Nintendo hasn't really been because Silicon Knights is fucking dead. So pretty much. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, um, no, that's a good one though. The Virtual Console. That's good. I, I hope to see. I also hope to see that expand because they really fucked up with the Wii U. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, they made a lot of ground with the Wii U as well for Virtual Console. We got to see Game Boy Advance, what was and it, even DS, DS games. games. Yes. Wii titles as well. Uh, Wii titles, yeah, so which was, a, one, that was great. I was not expecting that. I was, expecting, I was I expecting to see GameCube before I saw Wii. Finally, I can get Metroid Prime Trilogy or... For $20. Or Xenoblade yeah. for $20. Yeah. And so yeah, GameStop and gouging. Oh my god, yeah. GameStop oh, has been killing us on those Wii games. Um, but... They also fucked up majorly because yeah. the Wii um, Virtual Console Store. I mean, I don't even think it was called Virtual Console at the time. It, yeah, yeah. But the Wii sold. Wii Shop. Um, they sold Japan import games mm-hmm. like uh, Sin, Sin and Punishment. Punishment. Yeah. They sold they that, uh, they? Turbo Graphics, right? Um, yeah. They sold lots of different old games digitally on the Wii Store. And they carried zero of them over mm-hmm. um, and they just trickle out a game a week and then they just trickled oh, yeah, out a game a week like point. super mario bro exactly and that's what i don't want uh, and i don't want that either i want it to be pre-established when i turn on the switch i want that virtual console store to be up to date yes i also want it to be more expanded to all the other regions too because i know japan's virtual console board oh, yeah, they so have so much, much more, more. they have final fantasy games on mm-hmm. there yeah they have and that's Bullshit. Mm-hmm. If we can get a mini NES with a fucking Final Fantasy on it, just put it on your Switch's virtual console. It's funny because it's on the mini NES, mm-hmm. but it's not it's, on a uh, virtual console. For no. us, it is for Japan, but not oh, for fantastic. us, though. That's, that's so that's... dumb. And we're saying this as Americans. God help, God help those who live in Europe. Oh, no, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm proud yeah. to be an American right now because at least we get the little bit of trickle down. <laughs> well, all other oh, regions man. are just fucked i remember people asking hey can you play more persona 4 uh fighting climax we don't have it here (laughs) oh yeah i mean yeah that's a bad game but no (laughs) but like it's just and that's more um atlas's old um yeah distribution well well, atlas has always been a little weird all right so we got nico stepping out he's He's got to get up early in the morning. See you so, guys. Yeah. Bye, Nico. Bye. 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 All right. So, I mean, we talked about Virtual Console, and I never really got to say my dream game. And, oh, no. Yeah, go um, ahead. I've been saying this for every Nintendo console since the, the GameCube. 
Um, my F Zero. <laughs> Shut up, God! Why are you gonna ruin it? My dream game is F Zero. I don't want F Zero again. Fuck, bring F Zero back. I mean, at least we're getting right. Uh, fast fast R M X. Yes, yeah. is the F Zero game that I never got for the Wii or Wii U, and well, it Wii is, U had Fast Racing Neo. It was all right. Oh, okay. It was just all right. Oh, gotcha. Um, but well, it's the same people. It, it is the same people. So I'll, it was all right. And it step it up for the sequel. Step it up for the sequel. Yeah, and I think they will because it mm. looks beautiful. Mm. It looks gorgeous. Uh, it it looks gorgeous. Mm-hmm. So I, I I hope that it looks fast. It looks smooth. Like it looks RMX. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It looks fast. It looks RMX. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. yeah. So I hope it. I hope it's everything that F Zero isn't. And I hope that. Um... Which is existing. <laughs> I hope it exists. Rumors are true. Beyond Good and Evil, exclusive to the Switch, at least time. Yes, I also heard that. So, that a lot, lot to look forward, I think, to with the Switch. Yeah, it's... It, I think they, it's got a strong announcement. Not a strong launch. Yes, But a announcement. strong announcement. And that is more hope than I ever had for the Wii U. Because mm-hmm. those well, trailers that I saw for the Wii U, I never oh. was excited. Wii U was borked from the start. It like, was borked from the start. That, I don't think it could be said any better than that. <laughs> um, well, um, now let's get into what this podcast actually is. <laughs> this podcast has a purpose? Yeah, I guess it has a purpose. Fuck, Remember, we're me? in a library. Oh, Nico God. had to leave Quarantine? the library. Yeah, Quarantine? Makes no, sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, just go, come, come with me, listeners. Come with me on this magical journey where you divert all reality just for a moment uh-huh. and he's in a different part of the library oh. but we're gonna because t- he also doesn't like to read he was like yeah i'll get on your reading podcast but i don't want to read that sounds ridiculous <laughs> reading for a reading podcast. yeah what is this what about is this books <laughs> witchcraft so but me josh one and josh a we've mm. done our due diligence and we mm. have brought to you a couple swell books. Oh, yeah. Swell novelizations. Some more swell than others. Some more swell than others. And, well, let's just dive right into there. Josh, A, what did you read? I read Bioshock Rapture. Oh, cool. Yeah, like, no, like... The game... All right, for those of you who don't know, Bioshock is a video game. Mm-hmm. Originally launched for the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Yeah. Recently, they came out with their uh, HD, HD yeah. re- remixes. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, not remix, but... For that. To and, and, infinite. and infinite, and we won't, and talk, we won't talk about that really. But oh yeah, um, let's talk about the book though, Bioshock Rapture. Okay, to start off, um, how much exposure do you have to Bioshock? Um, I played completely the first game, the mm. s- first half of the second game. Mm-hmm. Never finished the second game. I don't know why. And unfortunately for me, I played completely Bioshock Infinite. Now, did you play Burial at Sea? No. Okay, I did not. Okay. I, because... I, I don't know much about the DLCs for either of the games. And, yeah, I was reading up. Apparently, this kind of ties into Burial at Sea. Interesting. Or, ra- rather, Burial at Sea has the same kind of... Yeah, it's based off the book. Setup. Wow. Well, <laughs> no. Okay. But um, this book is entirely prologue. It... Oh, Okay goes from 1945 to 1959 how it, how long before bioshock one um you see jack as a baby and him being conditioned oh yeah wow. yeah and they mentioned the w y k program wow yeah no that was so great when i saw that so your book was good yeah no it was very good that's not fair we're yeah, supposed to be no. reading bad books <laughs> well, <laughs> well we... i cheated <laughs> you cheated <laughs> but yeah no um it's got a shit ton of characters from the games uh-huh. almost every character in the book is from the games. Oh, okay. Like, they pop up in audio logs. It's got word-for-word transcriptions of the audio logs. It's a lot of like, tender um, love and care was put into this Yes, book. yeah. Um, oh. The crazy doctor from the first one, the guy that slices up yes, yeah, places. Yes, yeah, the, the physician or whatever His uh, Picasso audio log, like, 
Picasso was a great artist moving shapes around. Mm-hmm. Why can't I do that with faces? Oh, uh-huh. Is word for word in... Um, yeah, that's one of the more famous mm-hmm. um, sequences like, in the game. Because that, yeah, that's what yeah. comes to mind when I think of Bioshock. Um, also, he's very early in the game. Exactly. So if you ever dropped off Bioshock, you probably got to that at least. Speaking of which, yeah, that's about where I dropped off of Bioshock. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, so... so... You, so... Are you going to play the game now that you've uh, yeah no you I'm play it again? super excited to go to back go back in to the game yeah interesting renewed ferocity so if you could summarize the events of the book as briefly as you could well it just has all the setup to Rapture and the fall of Rapture well okay for those of us who don't know what Bioshock is if okay. you just like a plot summary okay um like. You've got Andrew Ryan, who is mm-hmm. a man who built himself up by his bootstraps. Okay. And every man should have a right to the fruits of his labor sort of guy. Some real ide- idealistic kind mm-hmm. of uh, politician. Mm-hmm. And this is right after World War II. Okay. Oh, okay. And... That's good to know. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, so he sees the bombs that fall on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Hmm. And it's like, this entire world is going to end in nuclear holocaust. I need a place away from that. So he finds people that he likes. Mm. And he gets like a close, trusted group. And he builds himself this underwater utopia. Oh, wow. To escape from society. Okay. And the man and the government and communism. And basically builds his own society mm-hmm. underwater. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And he, it's, um, yeah. And it's just about that. Just about him building the society, gathering mm-hmm. these individuals. You get to rapture super quickly. Like within the first quarter, they're underground and it, or underwater. But... <laughs> <laughs> Under the groundwater. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, it centers around a minor, minor character from uh, Bioshock 1, uh, Bill McDonough. And he pops up in just a couple of audio logs. Oh, and really? he's one of Yeah, I the... don't even remember the name. Yeah. Um, he's one of the ones that tried to assassinate Andrew Ryan. Oh, okay. You see his corpse, like, propped up. Like, these are the people that tried. That's weird that the, the book would center around him, then. That's really mm-hmm. interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's really unique. Um... <laughs> Skipping around a bit, in when he confronts Ryan at the end, you get the um, a man chooses, a slave obeys oh, from Ryan, and it's wow. just like fuck. <laughs> but um, you've also got so Andrew Ryan is starting up this utopian society, mm-hmm. and it's all good for the first couple of years. But you've got Frank Fontaine. Mm-hmm. Who later takes the name Atlas. Oh, okay. Yeah. And who is the driving force for mm-hmm. Bioshock 1. Yes, yes. Um, and he's just mucking things up. But it doesn't help that Ryan expects way too much of his people. Like, oh, I brought myself up by my bootstraps. Everyone here should be so, able to yeah, do the same he's thing. He's an idealistic man who's gone a little loony. Mm-hmm. And he expects the perfect society. Mm-hmm. And... But, like, you've got all these maintenance people that are living down there mm-hmm. that are just falling further and further into squalor and becoming more and more upset at him. Yeah. Because no handouts. And his society falls apart. Yeah. Essentially. It starts with plasmids being introduced. Uh, yeah. Like, run faster, be smarter. So, for those of you that don't know, the plasmids are those injections that mm-hmm. give you your superpowers, essentially, yeah. within the game. Yeah. yeah. And um, it's harvested from sea slugs. Like, um, Oh, yeah, you, I, I don't know if I know where the plasmids really came from or paid attention to Well, you know when you find a little sister in the games. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, because they are just slug They're hosts. Creatures. They're hosts. Interesting. Um, when you choose to kill them mm-hmm. to harvest more, um, you, the screen fades out and you're holding a slug, which yeah. you like crush. Yeah. Those slugs were implanted in their stomachs. Oh. Yeah. Because it's, that's so the best like breeding environment. So for it's them. way creepier it's than I way even creepier. thought. Yeah. Ugh. Um, but yeah, you've got plasmids introduced, people going crazy on plasmids 
and you've got Frank Fontaine and actually the Lamb, mm -hmm. Sophia Lamb from Bioshock 2. Oh, okay. Also spreading her pop propaganda. Yeah, because she was in charge of the uh, shit, the sisters, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, was it? Well, no. Oh. Um, she's got her flock of people, but Tenenbaum oh. is the main doctor lady. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. I got them confused. Um, but yeah, it's just really interesting. Like, so, overall, would you recommend this book to our potential readers that we're trying to uh, um, <laughs> grasp into our cult. As someone who <laughs> only knows really just the main yeah. story beats of Bioshock 1. So, you, like, so you, you probably represent a lot of the listeners then, maybe, that mm -hmm. they, they did not play Bioshock. They're going right now. Why I should played, I read this? I played a couple hours and yeah. Yeah, just fell and off. And they're like, why reason. should I read this book? Like, I know the main story bits, uh -huh. like, barely. Um going up to confront like your main character's brainwash mm -hmm. by would you kindly um <laughs> but yeah it was surprisingly good um so definitely recommendation definitely yeah. a recommendation nice okay um and it ends nicely like it wraps up right before the first game mm -hmm. And you just see the downfall of this society. That's always And cool. it bounces around all these characters. The one thing that weirded me out is um, our main protagonist uh -huh. it has a British accent. <laughs> and his, his uh, narration, the third person narration, is written with a Cockney accent. Like, oh, um, it's hard to read accents. Like, that you've got I Bird in there, or mm -hmm. all these weird uh, things. So that yeah. took me out originally a little bit, but every other regular character has just regular yeah. things. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it's really fantastic. Well, lucky you. Uh-huh. I wasn't. So what did you mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. I wasn't so lucky. Um, I read Star Wars Episode One: uh -huh. The Phantom Menace. A novelization by Terry Brooks. Oh yeah, uh, um, yeah. Who wrote your book, by the way? So we can just give John him props. Shirley. John Shirley. All right, props out John Shirley. That's the recommended book, by the way. Let's get into mine now. Don't confuse the two. <laughs> Star Don't War get it twisted. <laughs> Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. So. I'll just give you a little brief summary here, so just for those of you who don't know what that is. Star Wars Episode Letter I, The Phantom Menace, A Star Wars Story, oh. is the latest entry in the Star Wars Legends Expanded Universe novel series. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This novelization is based off the widely popular film, which is based off the more widely popular fan fiction written by American politician John Kerry. Okay. It's a kid's movie, I think. Mm. Uh, the Trade Federation has blocked travel to and from the distant planet Naboo due to their refusal to pay the Federation's raised trade taxes. Um, oh, wait. Okay. A wait, kid's sorry. movie. Sorry, kid's movie? A kid's movie. Let me remind you. This, of course, is all an, uncha or, um, an unchanged plot from Naboo. Mm-hmm. Let me let me rephrase that because I'm using words that don't make sense. <laughs> oh yes, that's that's what's remember. Happening I don't right re I don't read or speak. This is all an underhanded plot um, concocted from the Naboo uh, senator Papa Palpatine. Papa Papa Palpatine. Yeah, Papa 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 Palpatine to mm -hmm. seize control of the Republic somehow. Yes. So I guess blocking Naboo. Yes, I no. mean, in a weird course of events. Um, <laughs> I mean, it all works out fine. Did I hey. mention this is Star Wars? Have I mentioned anything Star Warsy in this yet? Um, um, this is Star Wars and a kids movie. I um, um, so I remember when Han talked about just to make just so they could get that Star Wars title up there. They uh -huh. they throw a little Jedi in there, and oh. there's some kid, and the evil politician is a Sith Lord, I guess. Okay, so that's just a brief Makes sense um, so far. summary. So it starts out god uh -huh. let me just i don't read much this uh -huh. is a big motivation for starting this podcast is i don't read a whole lot and <laughs> when i do read it takes time i can't blow through a book in one day so mm -hmm. I, that's why we're going to be doing this weekly hopefully so we give ourselves some time to 
to read the book for me anyway for my sake mm. um so also, already i'm a slow reader and don't read a whole lot and this book was the most painful oh, process man. i have ever gone through for any creative outlet <laughs> so i had to read <laughs> this goddamn book and if you hated the movie can you imagine reading the fucking script for the movie? Like, it was that oh. uninteresting. Oh, no. But, all right. It could only get better, though. Yeah, you'd think. So, the, the, movie, the, the book already diverts from the movie just a little bit, though. It starts off with a pod race. Okay. Start strong. Start with the best. I, I mean, I guess, uh, if you like to read about pod racing... The best part of Star Wars is its visuals and sound effects. You get none of those in a book. So, <laughs> okay, counterpoint, but also the worst part is shoving visuals and sound effects. I mean, yes, George Lucas likes to shove in visuals and sound effects. So, yeah, that's a, a double-sided or double-edged sword. But mm. at the same time, Star Wars is known for its visuals and its sounds. And yeah, I think true. the best parts of Episode One. Mm. Because it's obviously not the plot, or the characters, oh, or the wooden acting. Oh, no. It's it's sounds, and it's visuals. It yeah. is okay looking, and <laughs> the sounds are amazing. I love the spe- the pod race sequence in mm. the movie. It is the best part of that movie. It's, it's the standout scene. It is Mostly standout. because people aren't talking. Yeah, that's true. There's no wooden acting, because mm-hmm. there's no acting to be found. Mm-hmm. Um, wait, so it's, wait. There is acting to be found. In this is pod race. Subhulba. Oh. <laughs> they went different places there. Uh, okay. It's a it's a it's a pod race that takes place before the main pod race. Mm. And uh, it's briefly mentioned in the movie that Anakin had wrecked Watto's pod and that um in order for Anakin to race he has to have his own pod, which he's been okay. working on in secret. Mm. Uh, without Watto's knowledge and they pretend it's Qui Gon's pod and it's really confusing yeah. and it's a plot point that really didn't need explaining no. but the book decided it did mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. there's a pod race he fails horribly and wrecks Watto's pod and Watto is very pissed off at him man he sure is lucky he survived yes he sure is what uh, a lucky boy lucky for us and the future Star Wars galaxy that Anakin uh-huh. Skywalker has survived this pod race. Uh-huh. Um, we can get lots of great scenes with him later. I want time assassins going back <laughs> to try to murder him. That would be a podcast. that would be a better book. That would be a better book. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Does Star Wars have any sort of time travel that you've seen? I mean, I don't read expanded universe books mm. or read, but <laughs> um, I haven't seen any sense of time traveling in okay. the Star Wars universe, and I'm sure our listeners will correct me. Uh-huh. Um, so after that, it opens with the normal movie, which is the the trade sh- federation, the, trade federation, trade the Nemoidians, and I don't want to get into the plot of Star Wars, even though that's what my entire book was. But it's <laughs> it's kind of all there is. I mean, if you don't know what Star Wars Episode One is, you're not going to care about any of this. Any- oh, that's a good point. If you don't know what Star Wars is, don't read this book because it will explain jack shit to you. Oh, nice. It doesn't explain what the Force is. It doesn't tell you what Jedi are. <laughs> it it doesn't even tell you when you've switched planets. What's it, the like, glory? There's though? no screen wipes in this book. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know when you do. Could... You just want a two-page spread showing the star wipe. I guess. Like, tell me when the scene has changed. Like, I mean, you can figure it out. It's just if you don't know what Star Wars is and you don't know what any of these terms are, mm. you are not going to be able to read this book. Mm. Like, because first of all, there's no opening cl- crawl either. Like, I mean, yes, in a movie that makes sense, an opening crawl, but there's no background. It broke new ground. There's no, yeah, the Rogue One had no opening crawl either. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it just stole it from this book? Yeah, it did. Eat shit, Gareth Edwards. But so, I, I'm not going to get into the movie, but I'll, I'll get into the differences between the movie and the book. Mm. The Nemoidians, which are the Trade Federation uh, leaders, mm. that's the race of uh, creatures, mm. they can speak intellectually. Okay. Now, in the um, film, they have a goofy way of talking. Like, what? 
racist did you Chinese say? accent. Yeah, yeah, basically racist Chinese accents or whatever, broken English, but they don't speak that in the book. They mm. speak intellectually like normal fucking people. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jar Jar does not say Misa. He says me. So every instance of his dialogue... You just autocorrect it to Misa in your head. I mean, I do. My brain did. But it was very hard to read. Like, here's an example. He he says, No, no. Me stay with you. Me stay. Jar Jar be loyal. Humble Gungan servant. Be you a friend, comma, me. Oh, my. That is straight they from the kept, book. They kept the Yusa. Yeah, but they not Misa. Okay. They kept the Yusa, okay. but not Misa. So, shout out to Terry Brooks for writing all this shitty uh, Gunga dialogue. Oh, nice. The, the, like, well, to be fair, I was often asking myself, "What are the Gungas up to?" Yeah, what are the Gungas up to? I really wanted to know more about the Gungas, and it really just delves into why Jar Jar is hated by the Goongas. Mm. But I'm not going to reveal that to you, listeners. You're going to have to read the book oh, if you want to know more about Jar Jar. Oh, Can he just blow something up? I don't know. I, I didn't read that part. <laughs> what? <laughs> Jar Jar, what? okay. Jar Jar was actually sentenced to death oh, when yeah, he no. returned. Yeah. Um. They don't, they glaze over that. They're just like, he's going to be punished or whatever. They straight up say they were going to murder him. Oh, I thought that was in the movie too. No, it's not really. I mean, it just says he's going to be punished. Oh. And then Qui-Gon steps in. And this, like, no. they give reason for Qui-Gon stepping in. They're like, Jar Jar's about to die. <laughs> I should probably step in. We do kind of need a man on the inside. So, yeah. And that's why Jar Jar ends up tagging along. Because he's like, no, don't kill him. He owes me a life debt or whatever. Uh, fine. Yeah. Um, and then there's a, there's a throwaway line in this book that says, Qui-Gon sensed that Jar Jar was part of some bigger plan. Some... Jar Jar is the key to all of this. Yeah. And I was like, what plan? And maybe an evil plan. So Qui-Gon was evil? Like, why would mm. you? I don't. It was bad. It's just a bad throwaway line that they didn't need it. Well, um, or is it? So, Episode eight hasn't come out yet, dude. I they can all right. They continuously flash back to Anakin mm. in this uh, book, which mm. is cool. It makes you think he's the character, the main character of the book, unlike the movie where he's just kind of Tag there. Along, he's like on par with Jar Jar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But they they flash back to him uh, working for Watto, and at one point he sees the Tusken Raider, he's out, like, he's going to the outskirts to make trades with the Jawas. Okay. Um, oh, for Watto. Wow. Yeah, he's actually working for Watto, doing work. <laughs> so he, he's sent out to the outskirts um, on Tatooine to uh, mm. make trades with the Jawas. Mm. And on his way back, he f sees a body. It's a Tusken Raider, and he thinks he's dead, but it turns oh. out he's alive. And he, he has a broken arm, and while the, the Tusken Raider's just, like, knocked out cold, he... Mm. He uh, bandages his wounds, um, braces his broken arm. Nice guy, Anakin. And he's just, I guess, falls asleep while watching him. Mm -hmm. It's very bizarre, but Anakin falls asleep and then wakes up and just has this moment where the Tusken Raiders look at him and he looks at them and they just part ways and nobody like really fights or says anything. Oh, wow. That's it's, like actually... Yeah, it's, it's interesting. That he has this moment with the Tusken Raiders, which makes episode two even more crazy. <laughs> when he just slaughters a whole village of Tusken Raiders. They want to act like animals. I'll slaughter, slaughter them, them like, like animals. animals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not reading the novelization for episode two. Oh, come on. Don't even ask, you listeners. Finish it. I'm you not going to. No, it. I'm not doing it. Oh. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> anyway, did you know battle droids have names? Wait. Yeah. They keep referring to this one particular battle droid throughout the entire book. Oom Nang. His name what? is Oom Nang. I guess he's the lead battle droid on Naboo? I guess. I like whatever. I, I guess they have names. And this Jesus. book wanted you to know that this Clone droid... Clone Stony... Well... They, well, they do. In the Clone Wars... Or the... The Clone Wars... I mean, they give themselves names. Yeah. But... 
They have designations. Yeah, like zero zero zero. Like in episode seven, how he's effing whatever, mm. and they, they end up calling him Finn. Mm. It's the same deal. Um, there's one the very first time when Padawatame um, meets mm. uh, Anakin. Mm-hmm. He tells her that someday I'm going to marry you oh. in a very awkward line, and she loves it. She let's just smile. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh. Well, I mean, call a girl an angel and just like yeah. Solution. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> and they refer to this line multiple times. Mm. Like, oh, I can't have my future husband going off getting killed or whatever. <laughs> Stuff like that. They really build, though, the relationship between Padawatamu Pata- Pata- mm? and mm. Anakin um, throughout the book. They, they have lots of dialogue. Like lots, there's actual stuff there. Yeah, they're actually bonding. It reminds me of the deleted scenes of episode two. Yeah. Well, those are awkward and painful, but yeah. The deleted ones, like where he's having dinner with her family. Okay, that wasn't terrible, I guess. But, um... Like, there's actually something there instead yeah. of fucking nothing. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, I mean, they build this relationship, and it kind of makes sense i guess why a 10 year old boy would fall in love with a 19 year old girl or however old she is oh, Christ. i don't know it's really it's still weird though because i think about the actors that's the problem with reading these novelizations is you're gonna think about the yeah. actual actors right. while reading it and so i still see it as a little tiny kid and a very 25 year old um natalie, natalie portman. portman yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> so just very bizarre still um there's a little bit of sith backstory in mm. the book mm. they give you why darth sidious is the only one alive and why there can only be two a uh, master uh, and an apprentice a master and apprentice because apparently the sith tore each other apart oh yeah yeah sith um, wars is a huge thing yeah so they get into that a little bit just uh, one chapter but yeah. it was good to have because yeah. it wasn't in in the, any of the movies no none of them they never explain why the sith there's only two, and they don't explain any of the past history with the Sith and Jedi. You just know there are Jedi, and for whatever and reason, they hate about, the Sith, and the Sith hate the um, Jedi. Darth Tyrannus, or whoever. Yeah, and they don't really tell you much about him. They no. just know that you, you're Apprentice, and you assume that's Palpatine, I guess? I guess, yeah. Uh, Papa Papa Palpatine mm-hmm. destroyed um, Tyrannus. Great. Mm-hmm. They didn't tell us anything. Mm-hmm. You just Now tell sense. me more barely masked evil shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. So, I mean, this it's just a hard book to read. As I said, it takes away the only good things from episode one, and that's the visuals and sounds and the music. Mm. Of course, it's epic music in episode one, more mm. so than any of the prequels, I think, uh, with the Duel of the Fates, definitely. So, I mean, and you definitely didn't watch the prequels for dialogue and story. And that's, of course, all you're going to get out of a book. Mm. So, it was bad. Um, when Darth Maul battled Qui-Gon for the first time, mm. uh, he howled, the book states. He howled with a furious rage. Qui-Gon As or Maul? Darth Maul did. Okay. Our silent, mysterious protagonist... <laughs> Or, I'm sorry, I said protagonist, didn't I? Yeah, no, you're not wrong. I'm not wrong. Everyone loves Darth Maul. Nobody likes anyone else. <laughs> but our antagonist, <laughs> the silent, mysterious, cool guy, howled. Mm. Like, a, I guess, like a like a howler howled. monkey. <laughs> like, just a furry. Yeah, I guess. I don't, I don't know why he howled. That was just really weird and took me out of the sequence. Um, and then, you know, I was thinking, this is the movie too, but black robes in a desert? Yeah, no, it makes sense. Very hot, I, I'm sure. He must be uh, sweating, Paul. <laughs> like, just force the sweat off. Oh, God. <laughs> Using the force for mundane tasks, like yeah. wringing out your clothes. The rest of the book from the uh, Tatooine sequence on is very just the movie. It's uh, just... Stroke for stroke. Yeah, stroke for stroke the movie. They add a little dialogue, as I said already, between Pad, Pad, Padamu mm-hmm. and um, um, Anakin. But other than that, it's all the same. But there is one line before I close on this book oh. that I really just wanted to point out. And I mean, I don't have the exact line, but Jar Jar's promotion to general, mm-hmm. like, because I'm sure everyone was wondering, like, why? 
Like after that, why would you make him the general? Going from death row to general. To general. Everybody was like, why is that happening? They explained it. They wanted him to die oh, in yeah. battle. Oh, yeah. It was another death sentence. Nice. They were like, they and was he just bumbles as a promotion. His way and he through. knew it. Oh, really? He knew, too. He wasn't a complete idiot. Damn it. No, like, he knew why he was there. Oh, and that, it was kind totally of sad. Oblivious. It was kind of sad. No, don't you fucking move. So, make me feel bad for John. No, Char. don't because you I, fucking I don't dare. need to summarize. I don't need to recommend this because you are y'all already know. But I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do my one takeaway from this book, mm. and that will be my summary. My one takeaway from this book is that I did not hate Jar Jar Binks when I read this book. Oh, no, I know, I know, God, I know. Everybody's gonna hate this. Why? But when I read this book. There were moments where I genuinely felt for the character because of different lines that they threw in. Like, he felt very out of place in Coruscant. He was like, why am I here? What is going on right now? And there, when he became general, he's like, they want me to die. They have sent me into this battle to die. Mm. Yes, his speech is awful, and I hated reading it, and I imagine the movie, and that you're never going to get rid of that. Right. But you don't have to look at him. You huh? don't have to see his stupid walk. There's no poop jokes. You don't have to see his stupid face. Yeah. And he actually was a character. Hmm. And that's my one takeaway from the book. Other than that, complete trash. I do not recommend Star Wars um, episode letter I, uh, The Phantom Menace, a Star Wars story brought to you by Disney. The one thing I do find interesting about that, though, is um, reading up. Apparently, this book came out a full month before the movie did it yeah weird yeah yeah i read the um what the insert in the book or whatever about the author and mm. that um it was very rushed and that it was based off of the original script provided oh, to him seriously. before the movie was made so this is essentially probably the defined version of episode one is this mm. book mm. not the movie so all those interactions that I was talking about, all the good points about the book, probably were just got cut, cut out yeah. from the script, huh. essentially. But yeah, that was Star Wars: The Phantom Menace, mm-hmm. and I do not recommend it. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're gonna close this out. We've been going for quite some time. Um, I hope you all bear with us, listeners. Uh, Next week we'll be back with more books and Aniko will be back. He's going to be reading a book too so we'll have a little more to talk about mm. with books and we might cut down our book section a little bit because we don't like to read. <laughs> but this, this... Make our book podcast less about books. books. I'm all for it. Make less about books. I this, all for this. This has been a novel idea. I'll sign off for Nico. Uh, I'm Josh One. And Josh A. And uh, just thank you for listening and uh, please subscribe to the our iTunes podcast, um, mm-hmm. we're not gonna pay for advertising, probably because we're not gonna get paid yeah. for this. <laughs> so if you all could just share it, write reviews, that would really help us out. Mm-hmm. Um, we're just getting started, of course. As, like, I'm comment, sh- subscribe, yeah. tip your waitresses, tip your waitresses. Um, tip also, your cows. also, you know, call your mom. It's have been you, a minute. Have you called your mom recently? Have when you was- seen? Have you seen how she's doing? Two months doing? ago? That was two months ago. Two... When you called your mom, wasn't Oh, God. It? See how she's doing. She gave birth to you. And for those of you that don't have a mom, I'm so sorry. Oh, oh. that was really insensitive. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I can't believe you found that one listener whose mom died two months ago two on this day. Two months ago on this day. <laughs> that they are specifically oh. listening to this. Oh, man. Listener... Listener, that mom died two that months ago specifically this crazily on this day. insane criteria. Please don't give us a negative review based on this. I don't oh, yeah. want to grovel here, <laughs> but we're just getting started. We can't, can't afford hold this against. We can't afford that one negative he's got review his because whole podcasting life oh ahead of him. He's the one listener that was listening. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh we're ruined. Oh my gosh. We're ruined. Hey, just give episode two a chance. Hey, it'll be yeah. up. It'll be up next. We promise not to make any more dead mom jokes. We're really bad at promises. Um, <laughs> episode two coming out next week on this day that we have released this podcast. Undisclosed oh, as of now, but episode day. two, I will I'll re- I'll retcon this. Oh, shit. <laughs> episode two, I'm going to retcon Putting this. Putting in work. What is this? Yeah, so no worries. 
I'm worried. <laughs> We're all I'm worried. I'm very concerned. <laughs> Thank you for listening. We're Thank signing off listening. now. Have a have a have a swell 2017. Could, could that yeah. be our sign off? Have a have a swell 2017. Even into 2018, 50 episodes later on this podcast, we still want to wish you a, a swell, swell 2017. 2017. We and, hope you look back like fondly on it. And listeners, go and read a book. <laughs>